This guy is Thomas Addis. He's one of the most performed living composers. He's had solo piano recitals at Carnegie Hall. Uh, he's had operas at the Royal Opera House in London. Sir Simon Rattle has commissioned orchestral pieces from him for the Berlin Philharmonic. But Thomas Addis is irrational. What I mean is he, he likes to use irrational time signatures and irrational rhythms. So what exactly is an irrational rhythm? It's a slightly misleading name. Irrational rhythms are no less rational than rational ones. An irrational rhythm is just one where the unit of measurement can't be divided by two. <laughs> Mathematically speaking, that means it's not a dyadic rational. So a triplet or a quintuplet is an irrational rhythm because it divides by three or five rather than two. But of course, everyone uses triplets and a lot of people use quintuplets. So that's not really what I'm talking about here. Well, let's start with your time signatures. So your common or garden time signature, like four, four or six, eight, are all based on divisions of the whole note by two. So two, four, eight, 16, 32. Four, four tells that there's four quarter notes in the bar and six, eight, tells us that there's six eighth notes. So in all the normal time signatures, the bottom of the two numbers will always be divisible by two. So irrational values divide the whole note by a different number. Four six, for example, would mean dividing a whole note by six and having a bar that contains four of those notes. Why would you do that? Well, the truth is, it would be pretty pointless to just write a piece that was just in four six. You'd be much better off renotating it in 4 8 time. It would sound exactly the same and everyone would be a lot less confused. The truth is, irrational time signatures are mainly useful when used in conjunction with rational ones. So here's an example I'm in 4 4 time and I play 4 quarter notes. And in the next bar, I play 6 quarter note triplets and then go back to 4 more standard quarter notes. That's all well and good, but now let's say I only actually want four of those triplet quarter notes. So using standard notation, it's going to get pretty confusing. You can see that those four C's at the end of the phrase look very different from the ones at the beginning, even though they're actually exactly the same rhythm. So the idea behind the irrational bar is to simplify the way of notating this idea. The 4-6 tells us simply that there are four of the triplet quarter notes in the bar. You can see that this notation is both a lot tidier and it's also clearer that the four quarter notes at the end of the phrase are the same as the four at the beginning. Now there is a way to write this in standard notation and that's by changing the metronome mark. This is what's usually known as metric modulation. In metric modulation you keep the time signature rational but instead you change the tempo and you would usually specify a precise relationship between the two tempi. So the previous example would look like this. Here the metric modulation mark shows that what was a quarter note triplet in the first bar is now a quarter note in the second. Historical aside, it's worth noting that this method of notating metric modulation is exactly the opposite of what composers used to do. Composers used to mark it like this. So in this case, the new quarter note equals the old half note. Sometimes they would even write explicitly precedente, as in the new quarter note is equivalent of the preceding half note. Notation expert Elaine Gould, in her book Behind Bars, recommends not using this older style now as it's more ambiguous. Most contemporary composers use the new method. So here's a very simple real world example from a piece I wrote called Grown Box for Metropolis Ensemble in New York in 2008. So in this piece I wanted a kind of wonky rhythm which contrasted a pattern of quarter note triplets with the occasional hiccup of a 3-8 bar. But as I was working on it, I realized I wanted 14 notes between the two 3-8 bars, which meant I could have four groups of standard triplets with two more quarter note triplets left over. So I decided to use a 2-6 bar at this point. It's a good example because it's about as simple a use of an irrational bar as you can imagine.
think a desire for wonky rhythms is actually one of the main uses of these kind of time signatures. Rhythms that are almost regular but have a sort of hobble to them, so you're never quite sure where the next jolt is coming from. Here's an example from Addis's piece Totentanz, which he wrote for the BBC Proms in 2013. He's using a little two-note falling phrase, but because each note is sometimes a quarter note and sometimes a quarter note triplet, the overall rhythm is definitely wonky. If you if found, you found that, unsettling, that unsettling, bear in mind it is a dance, dance of death. death. So. Addis seems to be using these time signatures more and more. Totentance has them on almost every page. He also uses irrational rhythms in the sense of parts of a triplet or parts of a quintuplet. Here's one example from a 3-4 bar in his orchestral piece Tevot. It's like he's taken a triplet, ripped it apart and stuck a couple of eighth notes in the middle. The fact that Addis wrote this in an orchestral texture and at a pretty fast tempo was a risk because of the difficulties of getting an ensemble to play together. But the fact that many of these pieces by Addis have been taken up by orchestras all over the world means I think that he has managed to open a new horizon in the way classical musicians think about rhythm. If you're considering using irrational time signatures or irrational rhythms, you should definitely proceed with caution. Take into account who you're writing for, whether they are likely to have come across these things before, whether it will take half the rehearsal to explain what you mean to them, Always think about what's most convenient to the performer to help them convey the idea you're trying to get across in the music. Thanks for watching. This is my brand new baby channel, so please do support it by liking, subscribing, and commenting.